as a writer, uh, you look at uh, Lincoln as uh, capable of expressing himself and asking himself questions. In this book, uh, in Lincoln's hand, the original manuscripts, I analyze the end of the first inaugural. Popular government of majority rule. Here it was suddenly challenged when some people said, well, we don't like the way the election went, so we'll go our own way. In his draft of his first inaugural address, President-elect Lincoln had planned to conclude with a message to his dissatisfied friends in the South that the choice of peace or the sword was in their hands and not in his. He was not going into a civil war to free the slaves. If he concentrated on abolition, that would divide the North and make it impossible for him to win the civil war. William Seward, whom Lincoln had beaten for the Republican nomination, suggested in a letter that this note of defiance be tempered with a note of fraternal affection. Lincoln accepted Seward's idea of seeking to evoke the sentimental ties that could help bind the nation together, but he rewrote this suggested passage, lifting it from oratory to poetry. I'm loath to close. We are not enemies, but friends. He had read the Bible closely, and he had picked up its cadences and a lot of its phrases. The mystic chords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land. His purpose was to hold together the Union so that the idea of majority rule would have a birth of freedom will yet swell the chorus of the Union when again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nation.